Guys, so I had to get on here and give you all this word really, really quickly. And it's super, super serious, guys. And I pray that as you guys hear this, if it applies to you, I pray that you will repent. If it does not apply to you, I pray that you will repent, that you will pray for those who, the, who it does apply to and that they will seek repentance and turn around to the Lord. My brothers and sisters, what the Lord is showing me that there are a lot of pastors, a lot of people that are in this position of leadership where God called some of them, okay, because not all of them are called and God has placed something else in my spirit that I need to speak about, but that's going to be a later video that I'm going to upload. But one of the things that God is showing me is that there are a lot of pastors and preachers, people who are in these leadership positions who have organized churches and they have a ministerial team, a ministerial staff that they're going to be, they're going to miss heaven. They're going to miss heaven, even with the churches, the campuses and everything. And the reason why they're going to miss heaven is because there's several things. One is they're being influenced by the crowd. They're being influenced by the big tithers. They are also tithing. And when church, when tithing is no longer a requirement, there are many of them that have seen the scripture and the chapters in the word of God and in how tithing should be. So even if they are, even if they wanted to continue doing this, a lot of them are robbing the people. They are not doing this for anything other than themselves. They are building churches with the money instead of people. But guys, that's just a small bit of it. The thing that God is showing me why a lot of preachers, not all of them, but many of them is going to miss God and heaven is because they, there are many of them who are holding back other people that's on their ministerial teams by telling them that they can't hear from God or by telling them it is not their time. Now, sometimes you have pastors who truly do have a heart from the Lord, have a heart from for God, and they love the Lord, and they are truly, um, they're led by God in how they are giving counsel, but one of the things with them is they will not try to override something that's within another person. So if the, the the someone on his ministerial staff or the ministry comes in and say, I feel like this is what the Lord is calling me to do. Let's say he prays about it and not that we're waiting on permission or they're waiting on permission, but he prays about it, whatever, or somehow he feels like the person's not ready. He is not going to try to override the person. He may give the person some counsel, but this, these pastors will always encourage the person to go back to God or to seek God out. And they are going to, they're not going to get into the way of what God is doing because they also understand that, hey, maybe God has not given me all the pieces, but he has shown this person what they need to do. So because it is this person's life and this person's call and this person's vision, I won't necessarily get all of it. So they respect that. They try to guide people, but at the same time, they know that, hey, God is God and God is sovereign. I can't override God. No, no, no. What God is talking about are people who, pastors who are holding back their staff. They are holding back their, those who are in their ministries and telling them that they are not ready or they are not called or they are jealous of them. And so they don't want them to move ahead. So these individuals are just sitting and sitting in their ministry and not doing what they need to do. Now, Ultimately, the person who chooses to do this, they are going to be held accountable. They're not going to be able to go before God and say, oh, my pastor, my bishop didn't allow me to do this. They have their own part of accountability, but God is going to hold a lot of pastors accountable. A lot of pastors are currently doing a lot of things. Pastors, bishops, I'm talking about if you are in a leadership position where what they are doing is they are walking in pride and in their own sense of superiority. And so they are sort of lording over people. So they won't, they're not allowing people to do anything, so allowing the, the ministers in their uh, churches to walk in the vision that God has given them. And they put doubt in their mind. And then if the person is still thinking about it, they'll use other people uh, or try to influence other ministers to either um, 
start to ostracize them, start to treat them differently, okay? So then the person will fall in line and conform again. Another reason why a lot of pastors are going to miss God is because they, I think I said this already, they're being influenced by the people, by the majority. What does that mean? You're preaching what's popular. You're teaching what's popular. You're avoiding those topics that you need to give straight answers. You are mulling over certain things. You are listening to what other people are telling you as far as, oh, we need to bring this into the church or, or we need to take this out of the messages. So you're listening to these people because a lot of those people that's on your ministerial team, oh my goodness, the Lord just showed me something else. A lot of these people on this minister, the ministerial teams are putting a, are lining your pockets really good. They have brought some great things, giving you some great gifts. They have brought some money into the church. They have brought some people into the church. They've given you some connections. So your hands are tied. In addition, what the Lord just dropped in my spirit is that there's a lot of people that you have ordained and put them as ministers, despite their lifestyle, in spite of their disobedience, in spite of what you know about them for a fact, you put them in those positions, not based on them being called, but because of how much money they're putting into the church. And so you've been bought, you've been bought. And the price that they're paying overrides the price that Jesus Christ paid for you to be in that position in the first place. So there are lots of pastors, not all, they are some that are truly following the Lord. But they are, those guys that's truly following the Lord and being led by God is rare, rare. Just like you hear the scripture that says the path that leads to destruction is wide and many is there. And the path that leads the narrow path that leads to everlasting life is narrow and few find it. It is the same way with churches. The Lord has me. There's so much I'm going to be talking about today, guys, in, in different parts of the day as the Lord leads me. But he's showing me this. A lot of pastors... A lot of bishops and ministers, those even some that you're seeing on television, the ones that you're going to their church every Sundays, the ones that you grew up on, the ones that you're reading about, seeing even some online, a lot of them will not see the face of God. A lot of them are going to be walking in a Matthew 7, 20 through 23 experience, and they're going to hear depart from me. And they're going to tell, to ask the Lord and say how they did all these great things in their churches. And God's going to say, I never knew you, you who practice in it. Iniquity, you who practice lawlessness, because it is iniquity to try to hold someone back from doing the things that I've called them to do. The thing about it, there's going to be blood, a lot of blood on these pastors hands. Why? Because the past, these, these leaders are holding back these other men and women of God that's supposed to be going out and doing the things of God. And so therefore these souls have not been, have, have not been attended to. And now God's going to get the job done regardless, but their blood is still on your hand because sometimes it's about timing. It's about timing. And so you're, you're not doing the things of God. They, they have held people back. So these men and women of God have not gone out to do the work and their souls involved. There is always a spider web and a domino effect that results from our obedience or disobedience. Okay. You're going to, the domino effect of blessings or the domino effect of cursing, the domino effect of life or the domino and cobweb effect, if you want to say, of, of, of death, life or death. We got to walk in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, where God says, I, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you to choose life or death, blessings or cursing, that it may be well, that it may be well with you and your descendants. So while a lot of pastors are doing a lot of great things, it looks good to you. It looks good to me in some cases. Many of them will hear depart from me. Many ministers and leaders and teachers and prophets are going to hear depart from me. But God has shown me that a lot of pastors are walking in pride. They're walking in jealousy. They are walking in manipulation. They are walking in control. And therefore, they're stopping people. They're either stopping people from doing the things that they need to do, having their ministers in there, like glorified secretaries and water carriers, okay? They've ordained and brought people in the ministry 
Just because that person has money, they've shut their mouth on the truth. They stop preaching the truth because they're following what their minister and the people of the church are telling them to make them comfortable, to keep the pews filled, and to keep money in their pockets. God is calling you guys, you pastors, to repent. Repent before it's too late. Repent before it's too late. Repent before you find that you are taking your last breath and you are still in this era. This is the word of the Lord today.